And welcome inside the Backstage Pass, of course, always presented by our friends over at uh, Bangtail Whiskey. Check them out, easyliquor.com, if you want to put the order in there, or, of course, at bangtail.com. And our friends over at Honky Tonk Texas, of course, powered by the Sports Guides podcast.com. And, of course, definitely our friends at hightidecountry.net. You can check us out there for all the previous shows. Got a good one for you today to lead off the week. Hope everybody had a great Labor Day. Got a chance to labor a little bit and get those afternoon naps in. Uh, too, which is good there. But we're back, ready for a new week of music, and excited to welcome in. Uh, you saw him on season 22 of NBC's popular show, The Voice, and it's uh, Peyton Aldrich is the voice today on the backstage pass. What's up, Peyton? What's up, dude? How are you? Man, hanging in there. Like I said, just good to have you here. Looking forward to chatting over these next 20 or 30 minutes. And if the uh, audience has any comments, feel free to leave them there in the uh, comment box. Well, take me on that ride, dude. Like I said, last year we saw it all kind of come to fruition on – the popular NBC show in season 22 with some great uh, competition that there was that you got to, uh, to kind of line yourself up against and, and kind of become the artist that you wanted to become. Take me through all that. That was, that was a hell of a ride, wasn't it? Dude, like I tell people all the time, I was just blessed and, you know, I'm just thankful that I got the opportunity to go out there. Mm -hmm. And like I said, and sing in front of four legends, it's not every day that you get that chance to go do something like that, especially a little redneck from Mississippi. Come on, the Mississippi <laughs> Delta don't get that chance all the time, you know. But, man, it was one of the best times I've ever had. And, uh, you know, I spent three months out there. And, you know, I was, God blessed me, and I was fortunate just to go out there and get a chair turn, man. As you kind of you know, go through a competition like that, what goes through your mind a little bit as an artist or a lot, because there's a lot of choices and things like that, and also working with different people and, of course, collaboration becomes a, a big deal there, there too, right? Oh, absolutely, man. Just like I said, man, just, of course, you want to go out there. You want to win it. You want to do your best, especially for me, you know, as a father and a husband, of course. I'm trying to give everything I can for my kiddos and my wife, you know. So mm -hmm. I just went out there with an open mind, you know. And like I said, I'm a friendly guy, man, so I make new friends every single day. So it was just a fun ride. As you go through the, the different uh, swings of the competition there, too, tell me what it was like to get that chair turned and then uh, know who your coach was going to be. Did it put a little thing – Put, put against the competition, not say at ease, but a little bit of peace of mind knowing you're going to work with one of the legends in John Legend. Oh, ain't no doubt. So when I went up there, I ain't going to lie to you, man, I was scared half to death <laughs> going out there and just all the crowd and everything you knows just awesome. And I would, I'd like to say, I just wanted to get a chair turn. And, mm -hmm. and I saw uh, John turn around and I saw Gwen turn around. And I really thought when Blake turned around that I had Blake and mm -hmm. I was so out of it, I didn't see the block sign down there. So I didn't even know Blake was blocked and I was in my side. I was like, Oh my God, man, I can't believe they turned around. And, you know, and uh, when I found out that Blake was blocked, it was, it was hilarious. And I've been loving John legend for a long time. So I just, I don't know. It was just surreal just to be out there and get those three people that wanted me. So it was awesome. I guess a lot of people say they get you know quality advice off of this show. And what I love about this show is the quality of coaching that they give uh, the artists out there to talk about just what John meant to you and, and the advice he gave you to know that this is a tough business, but you know, you had all the skills and the, the tools and kind of your bag there to prolong the career and coming off a show like this. A lot of people say the real work begins when you get off a platform like that, but give me the insight a little bit of, of what uh, some of that advice John legend gave you as an artist. His biggest advice he gave me throughout the whole time. And I can't say enough about John, man. He has been such a great guy and he's a guy that I could call right now and he'll pick up the phone and talk to you. But his biggest advice is just be who you are. Do not try to be anybody else. You're already unique. Just be who you are. He says a lot of time you find people out there that's trying to mimic this person or trying to do this. And his biggest thing was just stay in your lane and figure out what you can do and do the best that you can being who you are. So I think that's been the greatest advice is just being true to who I am. So that's what I try to do. Well, I'll tell you one thing that blew me away, too, is when you perform that famed uh, just big time song out there. Everybody knows who the Marshall Tucker band is, been around for a long time. When you stepped out there on stage, knowing you were going to perform that type of just that hit, that big time classic, that big take on one of those big songs, those anthems. Uh, what did that make you kind of as far as, you know, blood rushing through the veins and the feelings, the emotions to come out of there, too? And, and the performance was was it was a hit and very successful, no doubt. Oh, dude, I mean, like I said, that's a song I've been performing for the last five or six years at every honky-tonk <laughs> across the Mississippi, you know. And when I had when I got the email saying this is the song you're going to sing, I was like, hell yeah. So I knew it. I was like, I'm not going to forget the words, you know. So I did that, went out there, and I, you know, I said, man, it was just an opportunity to get to sing that song. So mm -hmm. I was very blessed about that. 
I, I love it too. And, and your story is so special. You mentioned that Mississippi Delta. Tell me, I guess, when that before even the voice happened and kind of people always ask, you know, when did you become an artist? When did you know you wanted to do this, you know, full time? And when did that bug kind of bite? Talk about growing up and just here in the South and knowing how rich music was. And it, it seems like uh, you've known you've wanted to do this for a long time. Yeah, so absolutely. And like I said, I like to tell people all the time and most people you hear that started singing nine times out of 10, they grew up in a church. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what happened to me. My grandfather was a pastor of a small Baptist church in Lambert, Mississippi. And my whole family sings besides my middle brother. I think he's adopted or something. My mom was messing around with somebody else sometimes because he's the only person in the family that can't sing. But that's that's a big joke. Me and my middle brother mm-hmm. all the time he's adopted. But no, man, uh, I grew up, you know, and when I found out, I was just started college and me and my wife just got married and we had a little kiddo and we got married at a young age. We was 18 years old and I did the thing where I'd go work at a job, you know, do whatever I can to provide for my family and couple years in i was like i knew this music is what i wanted to do and Mm -hmm. i just had a sit down conversation with her and just said look please give me a couple years to do this i want to do this full time you know and thank god i got a supportive wife who supports me and Mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing is having somebody support you and man look up where we are now man one step at a time but we're getting there we're getting there that's all all it takes man when it comes down to it is those little small steps to reach uh, the bigger goals in life too as well we'll take a quick time out here get some word from our sponsors in a bank tail whiskey come back we'll talk about hometown girl and the latest single and of course a lot of different music out there from uh, peyton aldrich here on the backstage pass a word from bank tail whiskey hang tight coming right back here at hightidecountry.net and powered by the sports guys uh, podcast.com stay tuned the bang tail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host, Kirsty Krause, as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And back here on the show, Peyton Aldridge joining us here on the Backstage Pass. Of course, some great shows coming up this week. Stay tuned to the socials out there to see who's coming on the show uh, next. Maybe one of your favorites out there that we highlight on an everyday basis. Back here presented by our friends at Bangtail Whiskey and, of course, our friends at Honky Tonk Texas. Appreciate all the support that our sponsors give us out there, too. Back here with Peyton Aldridge. So take me through this. You know, 2020, that tough year, we all get the word that, you know, the world is kind of, I guess, coming to an end, or at least the country's going to be shut down. We had no idea what this thing called COVID was. You guys come out with a song called uh, Hometown Girl, which I really uh, just really enjoyed listening to this all the way in March uh, of that year, too. And a uh, very successful song, and it really kind of uh, just does a great job of what songs do, Peyton. It tells a great story. i tell you what, that song is actually funny, the story I tell people all the time. My wife gives me absolutely hell for it. She says, so who did you write this song about? I said, well, Lauren, as a songwriter, we like to make up stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. We like to spread, you know, and uh, we wrote this song called Hometown Girl, which is definitely, it's not about my wife. It's just a song we wrote, you know, and it's mm-hmm. so funny. And uh, But no, man, we put that song out. And like I said, that song quality, I tell people all the time, I was like, I just got my computer. I didn't have the money to go to studios and record all this fancy stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a thing called GarageBand. And yep. I did everything in GarageBand. I didn't have a clue about mixing, <laughs> mastering, or nothing. I just mm-hmm. put some vocals down and threw it out there. And, man, it actually did pretty well for me. <laughs> I love that. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy how those stories go, too, which is great. <laughs> uh, you know, then you look at, you know, kind of this year, you know, riding that success, those waves of kind of the artists that you want to shape yourself as. Uh, another country song. Talk to me about this. And I love the backstories and how these things come together. Yeah, man. So I was actually fortunate. I did a show at my hometown. Uh, it was actually my first show in the big theater down there. And we sold it out. And I had a buddy of mine, Mark Colley, mm-hmm. who was a longtime success. You know who he is. And, man, we became really good buddies. And, uh, you know, one night we were sitting there, and he just pitched me this song. And it was a song to him. And a guy named Jeremy Bussey, which writes a lot of stuff for Laney Wilson, and a guy named Brock Berryhill, who mm-hmm. wrote a lot of stuff for Kane Brown. And they sent me this song. And immediately, when you hear that song, it just took me to that place. And 
I get songs pitched to me all the time. And it's just like, man, if I can't imagine myself in that situation or in that story, mm-hmm. I don't want it. And that song just put me right at home. So I was fortunate enough to get that song and cut it and uh, put it out. And, mm-hmm. and it's been one of my biggest ones, you know. <laughs> I love it, too. And, of course, that's the thing where you got to pick and choose, you know, when you put out a, a full-length album or an EP. And all, people always tell us here on the show, too, is, you know, what songs are going to make the cut because we got so many in the can. We're ready for probably, you know, at least two EPs ahead of, ahead of time or two full-length records because we got so much material. Kind of where are you at now as we enter into the, the back half now of 2023? Give me some of those goals. And I know you guys are going to talk about this single here in a little bit, too, at the same time. But uh, give me some of your goals as you look forward to the rest of this year. Yeah, man. So we just put out One More Night With You that we just put out. It's my newest single. And uh, we got a song that's dropping on the 29th of September, which is called Friend With A Beer. And, you know, in the musical world, it's doing a waterfall effect. So we're just steadily pouring out music. And, uh, you know, we're getting ready to finish up our last runs of singles for the new year. Then next year we got planned to hopefully put out a full-length album. That's what we're shooting for. So 2024 getting ready for that full length album no doubt uh, i got a chance to also check out uh some some other things you guys did this and you're right you compare it to a waterfall that's what it is just keeping one after another <laughs> keeping them yep. spilling over the top two uh it's all for you let's get the backstory of that one yeah man so i mean what you hear in that song is the truth man i mean first show ever played you know i mean just the lyrics and the story man i knew when i saw that guitar player on that stage i was like man i wanted to do that even though i can't play the guitar worth the crap i wanted to be up there on that stage in front of that crowd you know and you know it just tells about a kid's dream who from the little boy all the way to where i'm at now i still have that dream mm-hmm. i'm not i haven't made it and even if i ever do get the chance to make it i mean i'm just blessed to be exactly where i am and just blessed that i get opportunity to freaking sing for a living and uh, that's really what that song's about is just talking about as a young boy having that dream and just keep living out that dream that's, and everything cool. i do is for the people out there watching this right now that's awesome too that's like i said just great and it's, it's so important you mentioned for the fans to show up to the to the shows and buy the tickets buy the merchandise and of course you know take care of you've got take care of you guys as an artist because you go out there I and mean, you pour your heart and soul out there on the stage to have them sing the lyrics back to you is that the best part of performing knowing that the fans are there to support you Oh, man, like I tell people all the time, and, you know, you hear people say this all the time, and I really do truly mean that when I say that I can't do what I do without you guys because, like I said, if it wasn't for you guys buying the tickets, buying the merch, or doing any of that, I wouldn't be able to do, afford to even get my baby's diapers, you know. And if I don't get the diapers for my baby, my wife's going to kick my tail. <laughs> so I, I, I love you guys for allowing me to keep doing this. Well, you guys, you're very good at what you do, too, no doubt about it. Hey, let's let's talk about this, you know, with, I guess, the official uh, time for summer coming to an end. But you guys come up with kind of a, a summer anthem I, I love to uh, to check out, which was this past June, uh, summertime on Rewind, because I guess summer to me can last a little bit longer. Of course, the temperatures can go to hell, <laughs> but the song itself can keep playing, right? <laughs> Ain't no doubt, man. That song was a fun one, man. We were sitting there just thinking about it. And we had the title and, uh, you know, we just kind of get that vibe going. It's like, man, I just want that groove. And I said, you know what, let's put summertime on rewind, man. We always want to go back to summertime. Then we gripe when summertime gets here because it's either too hot. We want the cold weather, but at the end of the day, everybody's ready for summertime, you know, and mm-hmm. I just want to put that memory back. Of, hey, let's just take it back and let's go back to where we was having fun all the time. You know, I love it too. And this, this current single one more night with you that you mentioned there, and the next one coming out there, September 29th. Uh, how did this one originate as far as this one? Was this uh, written by you, pitched to you, this one more night with you? Yeah, so we wrote me and actually my manager, Bubba Cole, and uh, a guy named Will Rambo and Shree Austin. We got together and wrote this song. And, you know, it was just one of those topics of when I was just like, you know, my wife sacrifices so much for me to do what I get to do and uh, taking care of the kids while I'm gone. Doing, handling, being the man of the house while I'm gone, you know. And, you know, I just wanted to kind of write a song for her to let her know that I can't do what I do without you. And, and, and if anything, I would trade anything, you know, just to be with you. And that's really one of that emphasis I want to prove to her that, like, I'm out here doing this, but at the end of the day, it's all about you. You know, this industry is going very well right now as far as country music is concerned. Americana, this mix right now, it's such a great blend a crossover you get a little bit of this pop country and kind of the bro country movement too some traditional neo-traditional uh sound is coming back too with some of the artists too the industry has been very healthy it's at least for me uh back in the day a guy who used to run the road go to concerts and support artists and cover it for radio stations back then 
uh, when I had my, I guess, in my heyday here and there. But I, I can't ever think of a time period. Maybe that uh, 92, 93 into the early 2000s that the industry was this healthy with so much talent in, in yeah. the country music industry. What's your take on that? Man, I agree, man. I, I just think that, I mean, there's so many people as far as talent, man. Like, there's so many people that just don't get the opportunity to do what they do. And I, I think there's more talent. I'm not saying that there was more talent then than there is now because, I mean, social media, my God, there's talent all over the world that you didn't see back in the early 2000s and 90s, you know. And it's just all about giving a chance to people that really deserve it and really are fighting for it. So that's really my take on it. Yeah, you got, like I said, I think part of it, too, this female movement going on right now with what uh, these ladies are doing. You mentioned Lainey Wilson and, of course, uh, Lindsay L. and Carly Pierce yep. and Ashley McBride. I can't recall. I say female movement since that 90s country, too, back in the day where the artists were going very strong, too, when you had Martina and Faith and yep. Terry Clark, Shania Twain, you know, women of country. This is pretty cool right now to see. It is, man, because it's like history repeats itself, and that's true, you know, and it's like you see in women, which I love, you know, Mm -hmm. Laney Wilson and all of them are literally taking over the world, man. And, and it's awesome to see that, you know, I love, I love it. it. <laughs> it's great to see the female minds and the voices come together. And I'll tell you, this to you guys are working with some of the great, great, uh, just pure talent of Nashville when it comes down to it. Also for me, it starts with a great song, but that starts even before the song. It starts yeah. with the songwriter. And a lot of you guys can collaborate with that. You mentioned Gary Bussey writing a lot of things out there for Laney. And of course, uh, just all these great things. How important is it for, each camp to have just a great songwriter to be able to release great songs. Man, like I tell people all the time, you have artists out there that if they do not have a part in that song writing it, they won't cut it. Mm -hmm. My whole thing about it is if it wasn't for the songwriters that do not get the recognition, they're not in the spotlight. They're the guys that's writing with a pen and paper coming up with ideas. Those are guys that are more important than the artists. If you want me to be honest with you, because without mm -hmm. them, you wouldn't have that song or that great idea. And, man, songwriters to me, I'm very open-minded when it comes to that. I know if I write a song and this guy pitches me a song, and his song's better, I'm going to cut it. I, yeah. I'm straight up. I tell you, if my song sucks, I will absolutely <laughs> tell you it sucks. I want the best song, and I want the song that's going to resonate. And that's why I've always been fortunate and blessed that, I mean, I try to give the songwriters as much credit as I get the credit for singing. And I will always have, and I will always do that. So no the songwriter is very important. Huge important, man. The songwriters need more of that credit out there, too. We'll take our uh, final time out. we got to come back and talk about Oh Yeah, which is out there across all the digital <laughs> platforms from uh, Peyton Aldridge. Here it is, the Backstage Pass. Love that song there. Of course, season 22 of NBC's The Voice. We're uh, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Of course, a great week of college football, NFL kicking off this week, too. More high school football. We'll have coverage this upcoming weekend. And, of course, at HightideCountry.net. Presented by our friends at Honky Tonk Texas and Bangtail Whiskey. Hang tight. The Bangtail Pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host, Kirsty Kraus, as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And back here with Peyton Aldridge on the Backstage Pass, NBC's The Voice, season 22 out there, and the current single across all the digital platforms. One more night with you if you love the groovy, kind of just good feel of a little bit of country mixed with Americana. Uh, Peyton's voice will do that to you, man. It'll make you melt in your spot right there, too, no doubt, which is a fantastic song, which I love it a lot out there, too. All right, so i got to ask you about this one because uh, this one I love so much because of the word yeah, and I'll tell you why. So I don't know if you ever watch – the WWE, okay, oh, like they're just yeah. wrestling. Are you a huge fan, or do you? Oh, son, son. Okay, oh, yeah. so, <laughs> you know where I'm probably going to go with this. And so, there's a wrestler now called L.A. Knight. Yep. Have you seen? Okay, his biggest trademark pitch is yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> your song made me think about it too when it came down to it about just how good he is with his pitch or his trademark uh, verse out there too or his moniker. Uh, how did this get started? Because this is such a damn good song. 
Man, I actually did not write this song. One of my best buddies, John Ramey, and a guy named Jeffrey East. I heard this song. He pitched it to me, and he said, Peyton, I need you to just check this out. And if you and if you can answer this question being honest with you, and if you don't answer this question being honest with you, you're a damn lie. I said, what are you talking about? He said, have you ever seen somebody just walk by and you just be like, mm. Oh, yeah. I said, well, well, of course that's happened before. If I told you it hasn't, I'd be lying to you. And he said, just check it out. And, man, as soon as I heard it, I was like, man, this is catchy as hell. I mean, I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, it's awesome, man. I loved it. And, man, that's how I got the song. And, I mean, literally, I got the song pitched to me, and it wasn't two days later. I'm in the studio doing my vocals on it. I said, oh, yeah, this is it right here. That's what it made me think about because that's his catchphrase when it comes to rap. Yep. Ain't no doubt. <laughs> Speaking of your uh, of that in a sense, where that company's still going strong, uh, watching it now. What, who's your favorite wrestler? Who do you like to watch in the ring? Man, or tag team. Let me see here. <laughs> Man, I, my, I tell you, I tell you this. My favorite wrestler of all time. I feel like I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. Remember Rock Ishi. I do remember. I do remember. Yes, well, I do. He's yep. my favorite. But man, I, Ray Mysterio's son's pretty good. I like him. <laughs> they, they, the bloodline cool. lasted a while there too. This past That's what year or two? It was a good storyline. Yes, <laughs> it was absolutely. What about yours? Who's your favorite? Man, you know, for me, it, it's a little bit of mix. But I think right now, who's doing it for me to keep me watching? Um, man, for WWE, that's a good question. Um, you like Paul, you like Paul, don't you? Yeah, you know, I think it, it's yeah. kind of. Catch 22, but I think for a guy, Ricochet, you can't really go wrong with Ricochet. Yeah, yeah. And I think for me, one of the guys that was doing it, I had to think about that for a second, but uh, Drew McIntyre, you got to like Big Drew. Yep. You know, Irish I'm kicking Lassie. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm and then you got to love a hey, man, Riddle. They used to say Matt yep. Riddle, the guy who right. had some some of the, the uh, martial arts background. Yep. Riddle's just a good guy. They're just so athletic, so talented. And it's one of those things you can watch. And I'll ask you about this in rapid fire. Here in a second, but it's one of those things you can watch, Peyton, and take your mind off everything and just go forward <laughs> and tell itself, right? And you just smile. You just <laughs> smile, man. You just smile. Now, the other organization that's, that's getting tops uh, props out there and pretty much tops on the on their their cable networks, AEW. I love watching uh, some of the ex um, clients of WWE, but this AEW, which is cool right now, is just so much of this young talent with like Jungle Boy Jack Perry and yep. uh, some of these guys coming up. You look at MJF and all these guys that are doing it on the other side too. And congrats to that organization because they started from the bottom up and they're yep. killing it now on their primetime networks. Ain't no doubt. It's, I just think. love it. It's it's so much fun <laughs> to do. All right, got to have a little fun with you here. And, uh, of course, a new one coming out September 29th. That's going to be a lot of fun too. Cannot wait for that one to hit all the platforms again. Remind us of that title, September 29th. Friend, friend with a beer. Friend with a beer. That's a all. man's do. best friend is the a title friend. <laughs> the title friend itself makes it a great country song, no Ain't doubt. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> and, and I probably had it somewhere in my email, didn't even listen to it, but I was like, you know what? <laughs> that title is going to be great when it comes out September uh, 29th. Friend with a beer. I like that too. Great combination great. right there. All right, during the fun time, I guess if there ever is a time to have fun, like a yesterday, Labor Day, what do you do on a typical day with family or away from music? What's your definition of fun? Man, we are a tennis family. I know okay. you probably think of me, six foot one, two hundred fifty pounds out there playing tennis. But man, do I love it! I, I can't, I can't move that well, but I love it. I love it. <laughs> as long as you're doing something you love out there. Now, being from here in the South, the fishing, hunting, anything like that? Man, I do a little bit of hunting and fishing. Man, like I said, I just ain't had time. Man, I've been. I love it. Absolutely. I love it. And like, like I said, my, my life right now is music and man, I haven't been hunting I shoot three years. My manager, he probably kills because he's an avid hunter and fisher and he's been twice in three years <laughs> dealing with me. So I know he's ready for me to hurry up and make it so he can go fishing again. <laughs> now, when it comes to uh, food, stuff like that too, we all love to eat. No doubt about it. What's your favorite cuisine? Oh, son. If, well, I got a lot, man. Number all one, right. I'm going to think I'm crazy. Chicken salad, son. I'm a chicken salad and tuna fish guy and barbecue and ribeye, man. I was on a barbecue show called Barbecue Country. We ate barbecue all week, so, man, I loved it. I'm a barbecue, <laughs> chicken salad, terrible combo, terrible combination together, I know, but I love it. Oh, hey, good chicken salad. It's hard to pass up, too, when it comes down to it, no doubt. All right, I love this one because I hadn't pulled this out of the bag in a while. If Peyton Aldridge was not a musician, what would the backup career, what would you have done uh, for, for an occupation? 
Whoo, son, I would probably, what would I do? <laughs> Be a Chippendale, probably. <laughs> hey, you're just glad I'm glad you're a musician because you know what? <laughs> no, every answer there would have been filling the gap, but you know, it wouldn't have been what you love doing, which is a big, a great musician there, too, as well. But I loved your answer because nobody's given that here. <laughs> on the, on the show, so. <laughs> All right, favorite dessert. For Peyton. Oh, oh, banana pudding, hands down. I, mean, we're gonna, I knew we'd get along just fine because my grand, my grandpa, uncle, uh, just family members had that family recipe. Were you so, one of those that grew up on it that you learned how to make it type of, type so of deal? Say, thank God my grandmother's still here, man, because she. I've tried to make it, and I can't make it worth a crap. <laughs> so I just let her do it, and I tell her to make me. I want her to make me big old about three or four gallons worth because I swear I ate that whole something. <laughs> <one too much. laughs> Love it. Love All right. Uh, favorite uh, movies, uh, cartoons, kind of combination of that growing up. What were they? Uh, favorite movies. I'm going to say The Longest Yard for sure. Okay. Yeah. And remember the Titans. That's I, I mean, there you go. You said being a sports fan, no doubt. Of course, that's what I was getting to next. Uh, team wise, is it the Titans? There's another Southern team here. What NFL team do you root for? Man, I got to go with. Man, so my my mom took care of Peyton Manning's grandmother in Drew, Mississippi. Wow. And that's okay. actually who I got named after. And I had a signed autograph from him and all this other stuff when I was born. That's how I got named after. And so I was a Colts fan. And I know people were going to say I'm a bandwagon. When he went to the Broncos, I was a Broncos <laughs> fan, you know, and all that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, which, I mean, I watch NFL now. Then. Mm -hmm. But I'm old. I don't know. I'm stick with stick with my Colts, man. I'm stick with the Colts. I don't blame you. It's like I said, like I said, good Anthony Richardson, good young quarterback yep. this year to watch out for from the University of Florida. And I tell you this, even with the Taylor stuff going on, if it's yep. the PUP list or can't do whatever it is list or that type of thing or injury, when he gets back, Taylor is coming back at some point. Mm -hmm. They're gonna they're gonna reach it there in an impasse now. Yeah, boy. But Taylor to me, and I'll tell you this because I, I I'm a fantasy football guru. Now, I lose comes every, to year. every year. I lose. <laughs> No, I'm done with fantasy. I'm done with it. I lose every year. No, See, I've been getting better at it ever since. This I is a seven. Stupid every freaking time. I'm done with. It. I'm done. With it. So, I was going to ask you about fantasy football. Is that something that you oh. jump into? Because I, I try to get better every, every year. There's a strategy I, to it. I can get better. I'm getting worse. <laughs> I mean, you know, when they say in golf, you got to play it every day to get better. Yeah. That's bull crap. I don't play fantasy fantasy football for five years, and I ain't never been close to winning. I'm horrible. I love it, man. You are definitely one of a kind. His music is definitely hitting across the nation and the way it should be. And definitely uh, we need more people like him in the country music world out there. Make sure you guys go download it if you haven't already. Uh, across there one more night with you and get ready for a friend with a beer September the 29th out there. Peyton Aldrich here on the Backstage Pass. Brother, appreciate you spending some time with us. Uh, best of luck going forward, and uh, let's do this again, no doubt. Sure, I appreciate you for having me, buddy. Thank you, dude. Got it. Uh, Peyton Aldrich here on the Backstage Pass tomorrow. I think we have uh, Ricochet coming on. Yeah, it's actually Heath Wright from the band Ricochet. I remember a song called Daddy's Money. They just put out a brand new album on August 18th. And of course, we're back here this week with some more shows. Uh, 20 is actually coming up this week on Friday. Speaking of the female country artist out there, she's killing it. Got to meet her in Nashville at uh, CRS uh, just as of last year, too, as well. We'll see you guys on the Backstage Pass presented by Banktail Whiskey and, of course, our friends at Honky Tonk Texas coming up tomorrow about 345, 4 o'clock. Until then, have a great night.